Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another day. So today I'm going to be collecting from the auction. I got about, well I got 19 lots, but I think it equates to about sort of 24 boxes worth of stuff. So quite a lot. I also did, uh, if you are wondering, because I'm sure some people out there will be wondering, I did buy a few items from the cabinet as well. So I did get some Dalton figures. I got... Um, oh, I got some like uh, Ephemera or Ephemera or however you even pronounce it from the cabinets as well. I got, what else did I get? There was, there was another lot I got from the cabinets. Oh, oh like some, uh, I think there's some coal port figures or something. I'm not sure. But um, I didn't get as much from the cabinets as I would have liked because I think a lot of collectors were, were coming in there and, and kind of bidding them up quite a lot because on a lot of the items, well, some of the items weren't fairly cheap to be honest, but then on others, there was, uh, you know, like a huge spike in price and way beyond what I wanted to pay. So I think sometimes you've got to kind of uh, just assess it by eye with when the collectors are coming in and when they're not and, and know when to kind of back out and, and just not bid on certain items. But uh, And also there was quite a lot of items that were, uh, you know, had repair and stuff. And I don't that, like dealing with items that have repair and stuff like that. I don't know why. I just feel like I like to stick to quality items that aren't repaired that are, you know, that are no chips or cracks or anything like that. I want to deal with good, solid items like that. I might get into items that have had repair in the future, but I just, for now, I like sticking to the, the items that are pristine condition. So, um, yeah, got some items from the cabinet. Um, but basically, how I'm going to work this is because I'm going to be busy carting things back in two and uh, probably be two... Uh, two trips as well because there's quite a lot of boxes. I'm going to actually do an overview when I get to the lockup of, of the stuff and uh, essentially just show you in a little bit of detail some of the items and then what I'm going to do in the coming vlogs in the next few days or the next few weeks or whatever, I'm going to work in haul videos into those vlogs to give you a more uh, sort of broken down details look at individual lots because there's no way this afternoon I'm going to be able to spend an hour, two hours, three hours or whatever it would be going through very meticulously in individual items uh, to let you have a broken down look at, the, at these items. I'm going to have to string it out over a few weeks, um, over, uh, you know, it, within a few vlogs. And I don't think you guys want a video um, that's basically taking an hour or two hours uh, today just to look um, at individual items. So that's how I'm going to work this. So uh, basically the next clip will, should be in my lockup after I've done uh, the collecting and we will see what I've got. So this is the first load in. Um, we've got, I think, about four or five more boxes to get. So I've got all this down here, mainly ceramics. We've got some ethnic stuff in, I think, these two boxes here and just random, like, tr uh, trinkety pieces and stuff. Don't know what that is. Uh, we've got some random like military figures, I think they are in there, ceramic, and then some bottles in here. We've got a load of Carltonware. I picked up a huge job lot of Carltonware for 45 quid. It's like 37 pieces. Uh, they're spread between like that box, that box. I think I think that's a different lot actually. And then I think there's some more somewhere around. I don't know, maybe somewhere. Um, and then we've got all these. Uh, games on top of here i think i paid like 10 or 15 pound for all them games i only really got it because there's vintage downfall um there was something else in there as well there's vintage kaplunk and uh oh there's the sabutio as well which i'm thinking uh, if i break that down there's some good money in it as well i don't know about that super bowl but it's by peach pan plaything so that might be all right as well uh and then just some more random stuff down here so i need to go and grab the other lots um there's not too many more but yeah pretty cool I've, the only reason i've laid it out this way is literally just for ease of filming it a little bit more and so you guys can actually see a little bit more of the variety instead of just like piling it up in one big stack so at least this way you can have a little bit of a better overview so i'll just do a little bit of a pan for you and you can see some of the items so as you can see plenty of different things there's a big uh, royal Dal dalton bowl there uh, that's pretty cool i'm not going to pick it up because there's all this uh, stuff on top of it and I i'll end up breaking stuff um and there you go there's some more of the uh, carlton wear and stuff in there uh got a nice little lot down there as well some falcon wear vases and all the rest of it um we've got some fat lava there there's a little piece of fat lava there it's probably about a 15 pound well 12 to 15 pound uh, little item there 
Um, and yeah. Oh, and there's a nice little tin there. I'm going to have to look into that. Uh, I don't think it's worth that much, but it's a nice little tin all the same. I don't know what... Oh, that's all uh, ethnic figures in there. You know how I like uh, selling these ethnic figures. So yeah, pretty cool. A uh, little bit of an overview there. And uh, I will see you in a minute. So I'm outside the lockup now. I wanted to flat lay all this so then you could see it a bit better, as I mentioned before. Um, yeah, basically... It's all that back row, these boxes down here, these boxes here, these boxes here, all this here. This is the new stuff, like that box, that box, this box, that box there, that box there. And I think, oh, and then there's some first day covers and stamps and stuff in that little shoe box down there. So there wasn't actually that much more to collect, but uh, this pewter tray here is awesome. Uh, I don't know what it is, maybe a meat tray or something like that, like a meat platter or something. I don't know, I might be way off on that, but I think it is um, like a proper old one as well. It's by, by Roundhead, I've heard of that brand before. Got some prints and stuff in there and also some uh, looks like an oil paint in that one there. Uh, we've got a load of random uh, newspapers down there. We've got a nice Staffordshire figure. I don't know whether you can make out. Well, well one sec, let me, just, uh, let me just take this off here. I can't even get into the lockup at this point. Uh, we've got loads of brass candlesticks in there, loads of small ones and big ones. Nice little figure from the cabinet in there. And then we've got a nice big Staffordshire figure in there. There's some good money in that. Some, um, like, athletics brochure and stuff from the 1950s. Um, yeah, just so cool stuff. And as you can see, all the board games piled up there. So what I'm going to do now is actually kind of, like, pile it up a little bit. I don't want to crush the ceramics or anything, so I'll be careful not to do that and then what i'll do is i'll come back to you um obviously for uh, a little bit of an overview in a minute when i'm back at home uh, there's a couple of things i just want to touch on um so yeah I, I will do that in a minute but yeah that is an overview of the haul uh quite a lot of stuff uh really really happy with the purchases um i spent 380 pounds in total if anyone wants to know um i was thinking it would be 440 but i'll tell you uh, why it wasn't 440 when I get home in a minute um, but yeah just generally loads of different stuff and there is a huge quantity of stuff here like there's small boxes inside some of these uh, you know larger boxes with random little bits of trinkets and stuff like for example if I open this one here this is like a big blue box there's just tons of stuff inside it so there is so much stuff around um, I'll be uh, definitely in my element processing a lot of this so anyway I'll leave it there and I will see you in a minute so guys I am back from collecting from the auction house now so it was a pretty good day all in all and uh, yeah I got quite a lot of stuff as you could probably tell so what I do is when I'm carting the stuff up and down the stairs at the auction house basically all the stuff um, that I'm collecting is on the first floor of the auction house so I have to cart it up and down the stairs so generally what I do is condense it down as best I can so so there may have been more boxes than you actually saw in the lockup, but the reason there wasn't as many boxes is, as I say, because I've condensed it down, uh, basically just so I'm more productive going up and down the stairs and I'm not making as many trips. So, uh, yeah, originally there's a few more boxes than there actually was at the lockup, but it's a lot easier just to condense them down. And I would say if you go to the auctions and you're getting a lot of stuff, definitely condense them down. Sometimes... It can be a bit annoying if you want to keep lots separate, like you want all the lots in separate boxes. But I'm not too bothered about that, to be honest, these days. So I don't mind mixing lots in the same box kind of thing. Or what you could do is you could kind of put a divider in between the box or something. I don't know um, if you were that passionate about keeping the lots separate. Um, but also, I just wanted to mention in this segment as well, the Royal Dalton figures, I think I mentioned them at the uh, in the first segment this morning of, of this uh, video. Um... I think I mentioned the fact that I had won some Royal Dalton figures, included in that lot with some Gobel figures and some Royal Dalton vases and some other bits and bobs as well. Um, but I actually queried it with one of the people who I uh, know at the auction house. Actually, they are a former colleague of mine as well. I know them quite well. And um, I queried it because they weren't on the invoice that I had. And uh, I was just wondering why that was. And she basically told me that they have two different online bidding platforms running. So they have two different sites that they um, obviously do the online bidding for at the auction. And um, essentially, I'm assuming what must have happened is they bid the same amount of, as I bid and then the hammer went down and then obviously they gave it to that person instead of me. I'm assuming that's what happened. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, so I didn't actually get that lot and I was a bit annoyed because 
it was a really good lot and I wanted to share it with you guys. I really wanted to deal with them because I like dealing with the Royal Dalton figures. These were the uh, Royal Dalton lady figures. I like those figures. I, I think they're quite cool. I know probably a lot of people. I suppose a lot of people who are like into really high-end antiques probably like look down the noses at those figures and stuff. But I like them. I think they're a bit of fun. Um, I think they're quite nice. You know, they're, they're pretty well done as well when, when they were obviously being produced of, of decent quality. Um, but yeah, I like those figures. So it's a bit of a shame I didn't get those. But also, um, aside from that, was the only other thing I wanted to mention is I hope that this video kind of provided um, a basis for a, for a reasoning why I love auctions. The amount of stock you can get in one go, like all that stuff there, if I total all my hours in terms of actually sourcing that stock, maybe two or three hours at the viewing, um, maybe a, a further two or three hours on the catalogue online before the viewing, so kind of like a pre-viewing, so that's like six hours, like three, yeah, about three hours at the auction, so obviously bidding online, um, so that's like nine hours, and then a further two hours collecting, so that's 11 hours to get uh, 380 quid worth of stuff, which honestly is well over a grand turnover way way over a grand probably 1500 maybe even um touching 2k in terms of turnover value it might sound like i'm a bit crazy saying that but i've done auctions enough to know that there's always stuff in those boxes always gems and stuff that you weren't even aware of i even uh witnessed that when i was just looking through very quickly um at my lockup just uh like an hour ago i was finding things in there that i didn't even realize were in there you know 10 20 pound items that i didn't even realize were in there so it might might sound crazy that out of 380 i've got 1500 or 200 uh, 2000 pounds worth of stuff but honestly, I can guarantee there is a lot of good stuff in there. There's a lot of items in there. There's probably 300 items, probably the best part of 300, 300 items in there. So, yeah, a lot of items um, and, yeah, good value in there. So that's why I like doing auctions. You know, 11 hours to get that amount of, you know, that amount of stuff, that volume of stuff, that is really, really good. Obviously, at the car boots, you can get a lot of stuff in probably less time than that. But it really depends on, you know, if it's a good car boot. But then again, you could kind of say it depends on if it's a good auction, because that is true as well. But certainly, I just I love auctions for that. That's why I really do like buying from auctions. I mean, charity shops are so hit and miss these days. You know, as you've seen in, in videos previous, I've come away with nothing and I've been out for an hour, two hours. Uh, whereas with the auction, I know I'm guaranteed to get something, even even if I only get a couple of boxes, I'm going to get more than I would do from the charity shop. So, yeah, I just love auctions. That's why I love auctions. Hopefully, I've displayed that in this video. And hopefully, you guys, you know, if you don't currently do auctions, maybe you look into it. Because I'd seriously consider looking into it. It's a great source of stock. And, uh, yeah, okay, you might need to learn a little bit of stuff if you're going down the antiques or collectibles route. But, you know, you don't have to go down the antiques and collectibles route. There's... You know, loads of different auction houses out there, you know, for uh, there's like all these lost luggage auctions, there's bricker black auctions, there's household auctions, there's there's even things like cattle auctions if you want to get into, I don't know the legalities behind this, so obviously I can't be any sort of financial advisor on this, but, you know, cattle, buying and selling cattle and stuff like that, there's loads of different bloody types of auctions out there, how, you know, home auctions, so buying houses and flipping houses, there's so much opportunity uh, with auctions all around the country and all these different ones you can go to so uh, but certainly for our game for reselling household auctions and then obviously antique auctions uh, they're definitely where it's at and uh, i would definitely encourage people to to look into that but anyway I've, i'll stop rambling now probably rambled for long enough so i will see you in the next one guys hope you enjoyed the video give it a big uh, like if you haven't already and please do subscribe as well if you like the content on this channel so i will see you in the next one guys